Hey, what's up guys? So you might have yourself an industrial sewing machine and uh, this particular one is a post bed sewing machine. It's generally used for sewing patches on hats, you know, getting in crevices, you know, I've got the post instead of the flat area so I can, you know, get around all the contours of this hat and uh, really works well for doing hats, purses, that sort of stuff. But what you want also, if you have one of these and you're doing patches or you're doing hats and you need that extra bit of control and you wanna slow down your machine, and give it some more torque what you're going to want is this reducing pulley system here this is called a speed reducer and um, it's basically you install it after the fact because um, what's going to happen when you get your sewing machine is this belt's going to go straight back to that servo motor and even with the motor turned all the way down to 300 you still don't have the control in my opinion to do stitching consistently around like an oval shape like this it's really hard to control it even with that servo motor turned all the way down to three 300 this machine uh this pulling reducer uh speed reducer i should say is the ticket uh for sure I've, I've sewed you know hundreds of hats on this thing now i definitely have a lot of control and uh it actually increases the torque so i can you know sew even with a little bit thicker thread than than is recommended with uh, this particular sewing machine because uh, not only are you reducing the speed, but you're increasing your torque. So uh, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to install one of these guys. Um, I bought this after the fact. When I bought it, I think it was about 129 and they're actually at about 169 now. I'll post a link to that below, but um, let me just take you along the build. See how to get this thing in. Okay, so I've decided I'm gonna start filming some of uh, stuff I'm doing to get where I need to be and um, one of those things is putting a speed reducer on my post bed sewing machine um, I'm doing uh, leather stamping and and hats and patches and that sort of thing and so this is the perfect machine I just got it um, put together last weekend um, learning it and uh, come to the realization that I also need a speed reducer because I'm going to be stitching patches, circular patches around hats, and it takes a really slow motor. Um, and with this thing turned all the way down uh, to 350, it's still pretty touchy when it comes to the pedal and, and getting uh, that slow speed to remain consistent. So uh, I looked into it. There's a, you know, you can make your own pulley system. Um, it's just a matter of, you know, changing some of the the pulleys and the belts um i bought one for about 129 dollars. i'll try to put a link on it um for me at this point time is more valuable than anything so i decided to bite the bullet and just spend the money the 129 bucks um you know the time i spend messing around buying pulleys searching for pulleys and and making my own uh setup they've got one already made for me so decided to go that route um first thing i did is i'm going to be changing uh the the pulley that comes on here is a 75 millimeter that comes on your servo motor. Um, that's, I guess, pretty standard with these consoles, uh, pretty standard with the industrial sewing machine. But just to verify um, the size of my shaft here to make sure the one I'm buying is going to fit, um, I took this pulley off. The one that comes with it, like I said, is a 75 millimeter. I found one that says it's a 45 millimeter. Um, I happen to have one of these handy little measuring tools and um, I'm just gonna verify that the arbor that's the main thing is that your arbor is the same size um, so I'm gonna double check that <clears throat> but basically what I'm doing is I'm gonna put a smaller wheel on there put in my pulley system and um, I'll try to walk you through the process with me um, I've learned a lot from YouTube and and uh, I'm really appreciative to the people that spend the time to do these videos so why not do one myself and and try to be part of the solution so i got the new pulley in from amazon um so this was the old one that came off the servo motor 75 millimeter and here is the new one um looks like pretty much the same material this one just looks like it's it doesn't have the stamp on it um there's not much difference though I do need to pull this little key, little key that's kind of like a pin out of the slot and reuse it. Um, as far as like if you're looking at these, I was questioning whether I needed a set screw, um, but you don't because basically what sets it 
um, on the servo motor um, is getting it. Well, the key comes in handy because you can see the little slot for the key where that goes. Um, so I'm going to take the key out of the old one. But basically what holds, holds it in place is this assembly of lock washers and a uh, nut that comes with the servo motor that's already on the servo motor. So to remove the pulley, I just pulled those off. Um, I did have trouble getting a wrench on the back of the the pulley. Um, it's got a little slot for a wrench, but I didn't have one narrow enough to hold the hold the pulley in place while you turn the nut. Um, so basically, what I did is, you know, I've got an old filter remover for automobiles for a car, um, and I use that to kind of back up the the pulley while I, while I reverse the thread on the on the um, on the nut um, it wasn't on as tight as I thought it was gonna be though I might have been able to just to hold the pulley with my hand and and try to loosen it that way um, it didn't work the first attempt that's when I bought, got the uh, filter remover to kind of back it up so this should go on it's pretty straightforward no problem I'm gonna pull the, like I said, the key out of the, that slot. I'm just gonna tap it out with a with a hammer and a flathead screwdriver or something. And I'm gonna put it in this one, and uh, as you can see, it's a lot smaller. 75 millimeter, 45 millimeter. So uh, I haven't got the gear reducer yet or the pulley reducer, but um, I'm kind of preemptively getting my hole um, expanded where the belt's gonna go. Um, from what I've seen, it looks like the belt drops straight down where the pulley's gonna be right under the table here. So I've had to move a lot of things. Basically, my whole bracket's gonna have to, um, the stand's gonna have to move over almost completely to the end to the, allow the room and uh, for the pulley. So everything's gonna kinda have to move down here. So um, I'm just kinda hoping this is uh, this is going to be a big enough hole. Um, basically, I just kind of measured straight down from my pulley with a square. This is the spot that I came up with, and uh, so I'm going to cut that out. I put a little tape on here because this this uh, board is notorious for chipping and looking really rough when you try to cut into it. So I'm hoping the tape is going to kind of give me a little cleaner uh, cleaner cut because I'm going to basically be drilling a hole at the very end, like so. And then I'll use a, some type of saw, probably my little jigsaw, to, to cut these lines out and try to keep it as clean as possible because it's a nice table. It's brand new and I don't want it to look uh, terrible. You smell that wood burning? Yeah, that was a really thick hole, like when you look at it. So drilling with my hole saw, maybe it wasn't the sharpest hole saw, but it's clean. It looks clean-ish. So now I just got to finish these two lines. Hopefully that looks like it came from the factory when I'm done. Alright, I'm done. Um, I've seen worse. It's not terrible. I need to clean that up a little bit. That's where my old um, bobbin winder was. And I tried to patch it a little bit, but I touched that up. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it's pretty close. So that's where the new belt's gonna go. Okay, here's where I'm at. I've got, um, I've got my um, hole for the belt extended um, it's going all the way basically to the front of the machine so now you know my belt instead of going straight back to the servo motor back there is gonna come straight down where I'm putting the um, the pulley reducer um, so I had to make a little room um, I've got plenty of room kind of checked it a little bit so um, it's looking pretty good so basically um, here's my pulley and um, you know the six to two inch pulley reducer. Basically the pulley is gonna end up going just like so. And then I'm gonna have a smaller belt that's going from my servo motor now to the six inch, uh, to the larger uh, six inch pulley on the wheel. And um, you're able to use the same belt um, I, what I have is like a, it looks like a M53, which is basically 
um, just a V-belt um, and it's a 53 inch so I'm trying to reuse the same one I could probably just buy I could mount this thing straight up here buy a shorter belt I don't want to go through all that um, I had another idea uh, I've seen some people kind of put some wood material as backing here to fill that area and then they mount this to the wood but what I'm actually gonna do here is use um, some Unistrut if you're not familiar with this this is um, a way you can mount you know conduit or, or just various things um, to a track that's adjustable in this is what they call a spring nut so this actually kind of fits these little grooves fit inside the track there and you're able to kind of slide it back and forth and the reason I want to do that one because I need to you know extend it out here as you saw anyways and it's going to give me the ability to adjust the pulley um, horizontally going towards the servo motor or coming back so I'm going to have a little more um, freedom with my uh, tension on the belt I'm not stuck to just setting in one, one place and hoping that the tension is going to be really good on that and stay good um, so I'm able to actually mount this to the track and it'll be able to slide back and forth and I could just tighten the screws and it'll uh, set pretty well so my next step is to mount my unistrut um, mount my pulley on my unistrut and then um, in the next video I hope to show you how to get the measurement on the new pulley because I'm going to be using the old pulley for my vertical drop you know that's the longer drop going up to the machine but now I'm going to need a much smaller pulley going from the 6 inch pulley on the reducer to my servo motor so um, I'll show you how to get that measurement basically um, kind of long story short and hopefully I'll, I'll record it when I do it but basically you just get this where you think it's gonna be and you uh, just get a string and wrap it around your six inch and your two inch um, and just tie that string or shoelace or whatever you might use into a knot acting as kind of like a type of pulley and then you cut that string um, after it's tied after it's nice and tight and you cut that string and measure it and that'll be the size belt you need so um, I hope to show that video to you um, you can google it that's how I found out how to do it so um, if I don't put that in this video um, I'm sure you can find somebody who's done it on YouTube so um, so hopefully next step you'll see is the reducer in place everything kind of buttoned up and hopefully working so I got my little helper here and uh, I want to take a moment and uh, if you guys like this video <laughs> And you want to see more, and maybe this guy will make some debuts in some of them. <laughs> You're gonna help me with some of these builds. Yeah. Okay. What do What do they have to do? They gotta. Uh, what Smash are they? Smash the subscribe button. Smash and that subscribe button and, and ring that ring bell. The bell. Ring that bell. So that's gonna help us tremendously to keep making these videos. Uh, but we hope they're informative, and uh, <laughs> and maybe Cole will make some more debuts in them, huh? You gonna be my helper? Yes. All right. He's gonna be my helper, so he'll probably do a better job than I will. So yeah, let me uh, just take a quick turn around of the camera. All right, so here we go. So before we get under the hood, let me just show you what we've been doing. I've got another video where I'm actually sewing these patches in place. Um, I make all these in-house. Um, I basically get some hide, some vegetable tan leather. I got some stamps that I had CNC'd out of some brass. And basically I stamp these in-house. Um, I cut them with my little, you know, clicker die. And then I sew them in place, you know, using the post bed sewing machine here. So, you know, you can see I'm doing hats. Um, I'm doing these beanies. Um, you know, I'm actually making um, keychains, all sorts of stuff. So, yeah, it's been pretty active since I've got that gear reducer in place. But definitely the control is super cool. Um, definitely a must have, in my opinion, if you're going to be doing patches on hats. So before we go underneath, I wanted to show you on the top here. Um, we had to move the bobbin winder over um, to accommodate, you know, the direction of the new belt. Because now the belt, instead of going back, it's going straight down. So I had to 
shift this bobbin winder back. You can see where the new screw hole is and where it used to be. Uh, so right now that was kind of engaged, but it was pretty easy to line up. Basically, I just kind of, you know, placed it to where it's barely touching the belt and uh, just, you know, drew a couple marks and, and set it in place. And I think I got it on the first try, but basically, you know, you don't want it really, you don't want it to be able to spin when this thing's not engaged. But then as soon as you engage the bobbin winder, it's got enough tension on there where it's going to, you know, wind your bobbin. So that was uh, one of the other altercations I had to make other than, you know, cutting this thing out further. I had to move my bobbin winder over. Not a big deal. Pretty easy to do. The other thing is where the legs originally were, you know, I had everything pretty much centered originally when it came, came to the house. Um, I moved everything over to the right a couple inches. Um, you can kind of see where the old screw hole used to be. So maybe I moved it over about four inches. I have this leg almost all the way to the right, but it's just fine. Um, it's still stable. Everything's solid. All right. So everything is in place. Um, I've got the new reducing pulley in place. And like I mentioned before, I've got it mounted to the Unistrut. So um, the thing that's really cool about this, like I mentioned before, is if I want to pull tension back on the new smaller belt, or if I want to loosen the tension, all I have to do is loosen that screw and the one on the back there. And that's going to loosen this, this nut, the spring nut here. And I could slide the thing forward or back. So it turned out, you know, the idea um, turned out to work really well. So even if I was off, you can see I got plenty of play here. Even if I was off my belt size an inch or so, I'd have that adjustment here, you know. So it really worked out really well. I'm happy with it. Um, you know, this is, boy, what is this, inch and a half unistrut? It's the deeper strut. They've basically, as far as I know, they've got two kinds of strut. This is the regular size, and then they have a shallow strut. So this is just mm -hmm. your standard. I believe it might be inch and a half. If I had a tape measure here, I'd measure it, but not a big deal. Just get your standard strut. That seemed to work out really well for me. And then um, I never did get around to videotaping, you know, the the how I determined, you know, the length of the additional belt that I bought. But basically, like I mentioned, you can you can kind of get this thing mocked up in place and then tie a string that wraps around this bigger pulley and goes back to the smaller pulley on your servo motor. And you basically tie a knot in that and that'll and then, you know, you can cut it in half and take a measurement and that'll determine how long your uh, your belt's going to be. So, so yeah, this is it. Everything's, uh, everything's in place. And if you want to see this thing in action, just take a look at my video. Um, I'll have a link of it. It should be coming up right about now. You'll see a link of that video and, uh, and you could also find it below, but yeah, just take a look and, and overall just real satisfied with this pulley system. So, uh, that's it in a nutshell. Um, if you have any questions, post them below. I'll do my best to answer all of them. I try to respond to every question the best of, you know, it might be a day or two before I get to it, but I try my best to respond to everything. But uh, I just want to thank you for stopping by, spending the time to watch this video. So from my house to yours, thanks again. We really appreciate it. <laughs> and uh, we'll see you on the next one. See you guys. Bye. Bye.